I'm Rosemary Conley and I'm delighted to introduce to you Mr Manish Bhatia, an orthopaedic surgeon who specialises in foot surgery. And I know Mr Bhatia because he was my surgeon and he's performed two operations on my foot and he changed my life. So I am delighted to welcome you here today. And um, first of all, I want to, will you tell me, please, how did you decide to first of all go into medicine and then specialise in feet? Thank you very much, Rosemary. It's uh, an honour. It's um, thank you so much for your kind words. Uh, why did I choose to do medicine? Um, I'll be honest about it. When I was growing up in India, um, there were not many choices. Parents used to push their children either become an engineer or a doctor. And I was rubbish at maths, so, so I worked hard to become a doctor, but I really enjoyed it. The reason I became a surgeon, I mean, that's very interesting. So as a child, um, I, wouldn't, I couldn't hurt animals. So that's uh, uh, something which is really opposite to what I became. And I never did any dissection. In, in school, we were supposed to kill frogs and do dissect them. I never did it because I couldn't stand killing an animal. Um, I never dissected on a human body when I was studying medicine on a cadaver because I didn't want to do that. But despite that, I became a surgeon, so it's a contrast. <laughs> well, how on earth were you sort of allowed, if you like, to qualify when you hadn't had the practical experience then? So I used to let my friends or colleagues do the dirty work, that of cutting, and I used to study on the structures, so that, that was easy. Now, of course I dissect, I, I, I do all the, I mean, this is what I'm saying, that I became a surgeon, but those were my hindrances, but I overcame them. And uh, the reason, uh, I mean, I, 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 I didn't mind blood or anything, it was just that I didn't want to kill anyone. And, yeah. and that, that's the reason for animal love and all that. Uh, That's a pretty good starting point, though, if you're a surgeon, for any patient to know that you don't want to kill anybody else is good. <laughs> Absolutely. So, no, and then, uh, then I chose uh, further on in my career when I was in medical school, um, I chose to become an orthopedic surgeon. And I, I, I became an orthopedic surgeon because I could see instant results of what we are doing. So, for example, if we are fixing a fracture, we could see the result straight away. If we have uh, done something to a joint, we could see the result. Uh, you could see it on x-rays. So those are the things which, which I thought made an immediate improvement, both in terms of uh, what you have achieved and later on, and gave you job satisfaction. So for me, orthopedics was the branch which I always wanted to do. Why feet? Because feet are complicated. Uh, because everything else is boring. So hip, just hip <laughs> replacement, knee, knee replacement, maybe some ligament work, come to foot and ankle, it's a world of its own. You've got so many ligaments, so many joints, so many bones, you will never be bored. <laughs> Variety. I love that, I love that. And I love the fact that, you know, you are actually seeing results at the end and that's very satisfying. I completely get that. Uh, and so what, I'm, just, I'm dropping this on you, what is the sort of most dramatic operation that you've ever performed on a foot? I mean, I've done loads and there are obviously uh, good outcomes or pleasant memories and then there are certain some you'll remember uh, for, uh, you know, not in terms of outcome but you'll remember for uh, some other reason. So I'll give you straight away which has come to my heart. So I was a consultant uh, in Leicester um, two, three years uh, in my post and I was called in the middle of a night to see a young man who had uh, smashed his leg. So he was uh, standing outside the train station and a car reversed into him. And uh, he was taken to theatre in the middle of night with his uh, leg almost dropping off. And, wow. and, and, and we called uh, the vascular surgeons uh, to come and see to see if we could salvage and unfortunately, no, we couldn't. So this young man's leg we had to take off in the middle of night and it was one of the most depressing feeling. I, I mean, he did very well. Um, 
don't get me wrong, amputation gives a good result. But for, for such, he was, I think, about 20, 21, for somebody to lose leg just out of nothing in the middle, I'll never forget that. No. So he went into depression, and I do remember him, and then gradually he overcame. And I saw him, I followed him up for a long time, and he actually made eventually a very, very good recovery. But to see how it all evolved, I'll never forget that. No. I can imagine that. Now the interesting thing was that when you did my operation, we've done two operations, one was, I, first of all I fell, I just fell down two stairs, twisted my ankle very badly and without realising it I had in fact dislocated two toes and they'd reset. Um, no wonder I was in pain and my shoes hurt. Um, and you reset those. Well then about, I don't know when it was, probably about a year later, my foot collapsed um, obviously because I was older, I mean we're talking, I think it was the beginning of 2018, something like that, 2017, whatever it was, um, and and my foot just collapsed and suddenly I felt this great big bump in the middle of my foot and it just got wor worse and worse and worse. Um, and I remember speaking at a school, uh, my daughter was in the audience, it was her old school, and I was doing prize giving or whatever it was, and she said, I had no idea how bad your foot was because it's basically, I was wearing the shoes I'm wearing now and I got this great big lump in the middle of my foot um, and it was agony to walk in it, agony. And I would go to my chiropodist every, I don't know, every sort of six weeks and, and I would say to him, and I said, well, I'm going to have it operated on. And he said, well, it's not a straightforward one. Anyway, I had it done, you, you, you operated on it for me. It was amazing. And when I went back to see my chiropodist some time later, he said, your surgeon is very, very talented because that isn't an easy operation to do and he has done it amazingly. And you changed my life as a result of that. So from my point of view, you are on the biggest pedestal in my life because only yesterday I was walking, I did 15,000 steps on my, on my um, Fitbit and I came at the end of it and my feet didn't hurt. Well, I can remember doing the same journey before my operation and not knowing how I was going to reach my car. And so you completely changed it. So when you do something like, no, it's arthritis and a collapsed foot. So how on earth did you sort of pull that all together? So, uh, I mean, I should have said that my mem most memorable operation was operating on you. Oh, no. <laughs> that would have been unwise. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, something like that, uh, what you have described is, um, as we grow old, you're very young mm. and you, um, mm. but you know, age sometimes catches, plus the amount of work uh, we have done, our feet uh, have taken the pressure and, and uh, the arch which is, in the foot, the structure which supports the foot that does collapse and arthritis sets in and the bones, they drop. Uh, and uh, what we did for you was we reset it in uh, as, as corrected position as we could and we fused it uh, and, and it did heal very well. And, and once it heals, then obviously, then you, you know, it's not going to drop and it's not going to cause any problems again. So that's, that's very common. Uh, uh, arthritis of the middle of the foot, midfoot, uh, and dropped arch, and then getting arthritis. And yes, that, that's how we do it, and gives gives a good good outcome. You well, know. it really works. But uh, from your point of view, you are so appreciated here in Leicester, um, and you operate out of Nuffield and out of Spire Hospitals. Of course, and I operate uh, in the NHS at Leicester General and at uh, Leicester Royal Infirmary as well. So what proportion are private and, and national health then? Um, so I, um, I work privately on uh, a Monday and uh, Wednesday afternoon. The rest of the time I am uh, in uh, NHS. Uh, having said that, I've taken additional responsibility in the NHS. I am. Um, I used to be head of service of orthopedics, but now I'm clinical director of uh, Alliance, which looks after the community hospitals. Wow. So I've dropped some clinical work. Uh, so altogether, uh, I think uh, private is about 15 to 20%, 25% at the most, whereas 75 to 80% is NHS. Right, amazing. 
Well, good for you, and that's uh, very commendable. So anyway, uh, thank you, Manish. Thank you. Thank you.